In this video, I'll take a look at a piece of vintage Heathkit equipment, the ET3100A Electronic Design Experimenter. While they had offered some instructional materials as early as the 1950s, in the 1970s, Heathkit got more seriously into the educational market, offering a series of courses on electronics. Part of the offering was a series of hardware experimenters or trainers, which provided a platform for performing the labs in the courses. They typically included power supplies, input signals, and a solderless breadboard. Different trainers were targeted at analog electronics, digital electronics, and microprocessors. When Heathkit got out of the kit business in the early 90s, they focused almost entirely on education until going out of business in 2012. Going through old Heathkit catalogs, I was able to identify at least nine unique models of trainers. They included the following, the ET100 computer trainer with an 8088 CPU, ET1000 analog digital trainer, ET3100 electronic design experimenter, ET3200 digital design experimenter, ET3300 laboratory breadboard, ET3400 microcomputer learning center with a 6800 CPU, ET3600 analog trainer, ET3700 digital electronics trainer and the ET6800 microcomputer learning system with a 6800 CPU. They all had model numbers using the ET prefix and were offered as kits that had to be assembled. Most were also offered as a corresponding ETW model that was factory assembled and sold at a higher cost. Some models were revised as A and B versions. This unit is an ET3100A. As far as I can determine from looking through old catalogs, the original ET3100 was offered from 1976 through 1980 and had a blue case like this one. The ET3100A, this unit, was a minor update around 1981, sold until 1982. The changes may have been to comply with the Canadian CSA electrical safety standards. The ET3100B model introduced in 1982 had identical features but was restyled in a white or tan colored case. It was sold until the early 1990s when it was replaced by the similar ET3600. Typical prices taken from a 1981 U.S. Heathkit catalog were $79.95 for the ET3100A and $139.95 for the factory wired ETW3100A. That would make the kit version equivalent to a little over $200 today. This was quite expensive for a hobbyist. I imagine many were sold to colleges, universities, and companies for employee education, often in conjunction with the electronics courses that Heathkit offered. Heathkit was known to have made versions branded for different colleges and universities. The ET3100A offers the following features. Variable regulated power supplies for positive 1.2 to 15 volts DC and negative 1.2 to 15 volts DC. These are regulated to stay within 1% from no load to the full load of 100 milliamps and are short circuit protected. A 200 hertz to 20 kilohertz signal generator with sine and square wave outputs in two frequency ranges. It's rated at least 1 volt RMS into 600 ohms at less than 4% distortion. It's typically about 6 to 7 volts peak to peak into an open circuit for the sine output. The square wave is 15 volts peak to peak with a rise time less than 1 microsecond. Two 60 hertz sine wave sources of 15 volts and 30 volts RMS at 200 milliamps maximum current. A solderless breadboard with 480 holes. The other devices are also provided with three solderless connections each. 1000 ohm and 100 kilo ohm potentiometers. It's AC line operated and can be wired for 120 or 240 volts AC. Construction is on one printed circuit board where the back of the PCB is used as the front panel. It's housed in a plastic case. Looking inside, circuitry is on one large single-sided printed circuit board. The power transformer, fuse, and all line voltage circuitry is contained in a separate insulated compartment for safety reasons. Some larger parts like the controls, switches, and caps are mounted on this side of the printed circuit board. The other side of the circuit board contains more circuitry as well as acting as the front panel. 
It's pretty safe being isolated, grounded, fused with a three-prong plug and line voltage in a separate compartment. The power supply uses discrete transistors to implement regulation, voltage adjustment, and current limiting. The oscillator uses a Wien bridge circuit with a 741 op amp. The circuit uses a light bulb for controlling the oscillator gain and feedback, a trick that was used going back to the vacuum tube days. This unit was aimed mostly at analog electronics and the power supply was suitable for analog circuits, especially op-amp circuits that typically need positive and negative supplies. The audio frequency generator was suitable for testing amplifier circuits. The protoboard is quite small. I'm surprised they didn't spring for a larger one. This is a pretty common size. The ET3600, which replaced the ET1300, did offer a larger breadboard. You could, of course, use an external breadboard for larger circuits and just use the unit's electronics. As an example of how to use the unit, I've assembled the simple audio amplifier circuit listed in the manual. It uses a 741 operational amplifier IC, and I've designed it for a gain of 10. We can use the generator as an input signal through the 1K pot to control the input level. The plus and minus supplies are suitable for powering the op amp. We can see the output of the amplifier on the scope. Adjusting the input level with the pot, we can see the amplifier start to clip when the signal reaches the power rails. We can vary the frequency as well. And see that the gain starts to drop off at the high end as we hit 20 kilohertz or so. I bought this unit in February of 2017 on eBay from a seller in Ottawa, Canada. It came with the original manual and foldouts, and even the original shipping box. It was sold from the Canadian division of Heathkit and came with bilingual Canadian CSA safety labels. The manual has some manually inserted assembly procedure changes. These appear to have been needed to comply with CSA, Canadian Standards Association, safety standards. I've seen this on some other Heath kits. The unit was working when received. It was in good shape, just being a little dusty. The switches needed some cleaning with contact cleaner. Construction quality on this one is okay, but not great. Solderless breadboards tend to show if they've been heavily used, with contacts getting loose over time. This one looks like it was not used a lot. The eBay seller was not the original owner and didn't know the history of the unit. He was also selling a Heath AC electronics course. I suspect that they both came from the same owner who bought the course and the unit together. The manual is dated 1981. As well as assembly instructions, it covers the circuit description, troubleshooting, and a couple of sample experiment circuits. There is one adjustment to make for the audio frequency oscillator. I did this checking the waveform with a scope. The ET3100A was a useful piece of equipment for learning or prototyping electronic circuits, supplementing the training courses that Heathkit offered. It's still useful today for breadboarding small analog or digital circuits.